In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. I give glory to God on this day that I am able to come and offer the Divine Liturgy on behalf of the parishioners, the flock of this Holy Cathedral. And while this is certainly not ideal, and I brought back memories of last year when the churches were empty and we were serving alone, the option to keep the church closed versus to come and have liturgy on all of your behalf, the choice was very simple and that the liturgy must be served. The liturgy must be served because there is a grace that comes from it. The cities that have Orthodox churches and monasteries that benefit from the regular serving of the Divine Liturgy receive a blessing, a grace from Jesus Christ. And uninterrupted, these liturgies must take place for the sake of the world. When I am here praying, I'm not just praying for myself. I don't just pray for my family and my loved ones. I pray also for every single one of you who are entrusted to my spiritual care. And I pray even for the people of this city, of our government. We pray for the entire world. And so the liturgy must take place while it is painful to not have a full church during these difficult times we must do what we can in order to continue the mystery of the divine liturgy so that the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ can become manifest and I as your priest need more than ever the strength of the body and blood of Christ so that I can be myself a spiritual sense of stability to the parish. So on the one hand, selfishly, I come to take communion, but I know that when the shepherd is struck, the sheep will scatter, as our Lord said. And so I must, as they say on the airplanes, put on my mask first so that I can assist the others. And so I must take care of my spiritual state so that I can care for the spiritual state of you, my flock. Over the past two weeks, I stayed home sick with the coronavirus and I've been cleared by the doctors to come and leave quarantine and with the blessings of His Eminence Metropolitan Joseph and Bishop Thomas to serve this Divine Liturgy in the manner in which I was told to serve it today. But during these past two weeks, I was sick with the virus, with the most strange set of symptoms, as I'm sure you've heard over the past year and a half from different people. It was not an easy sickness, but more serious than the sickness was the spiritual challenge that came with it. My wife, Maria Jennifer, and I were discussing the other day that the past two weeks have been, since we were married, by far the most difficult, challenging two weeks of our lives together. And that is going through three pregnancies and three births, raising three children, moving three times. But this was the most difficult two weeks of our lives together. Because the spiritual challenge 
were difficult. We were cut off from society in quarantine. And please don't think I'm speaking anything special about myself or my family situation because I know the suffering that so many people are going through with the same illness. So please just allow me to reflect for a moment as I come to our spiritual point here. But the isolation from others was very difficult. At the same time, trying to keep three kids safe and healthy without being able to take them anywhere or do anything for them was very difficult. There was an online conference that I needed to participate in that took a lot of preparation and concentration while we were both not feeling well. It was a serious, serious strain. And my reflection is this. At first it was overwhelming. It was overwhelming because I think I relied too much even on myself. I relied on fighting the symptoms of the virus, on trying to get the rest, on trying to do all of the physical things that we are told to do. I spoke to the right doctors, got the right medicines, but I was relying too much on myself. And that's when the first light started to shine, and that was after we got the test results back and I announced to the parish my illness, I immediately began to feel the prayers of the congregation pour forth. And their love through the phone calls and text messages and emails and people dropping off food on my doorstep and gifts for my children. This was a grace of God that you shared with your priest and I'm forever grateful to you for that. It gave me and my family strength because it was not just myself and my prayers but it was the prayers of all of you who joined to the Lord on my behalf. And this will not be forgotten. And the spiritual message in this is to raise each other up spiritually, not to attack one another. It's become so tempting in our day and age to separate people, to blame people. But I saw in these two weeks encouragement where people lifted me up and I saw firsthand this lifting up. I then realized that through the pain of the virus and all the things that I had to do and the responsibility of having to care for our children, I was really overwhelmed and unable unable to sustain myself through physical need, means, nor my usual spiritual means. And I realized that this illness came to wake me up spiritually. In addition, I could not take Holy Communion last week, which for me might as well be death. And so I needed to dig spiritually deeper and I realized that my own soul is weak and that the Lord has given me this opportunity to strengthen my faith. During the conference that I was at, I think everything in God's providence, He worked it out just the right way. I was encouraged to pray more, to spend more silence in prayer to read the scriptures more, to study the words of God more, to listen to spiritual things, to turn off the TV, 
and turn on chant instead. To not watch the news, but to listen to spiritual talks. And all of this stirred up within me a desire and a need and the necessity, the understanding of the necessity that even I as a priest, especially I as a priest, need to focus more on my spiritual life and less on the world around me. My brothers and sisters in Christ, it was an awakening. We are not bodies that have souls. This is not how the Orthodox Church looks at it. I was not born and have a soul attached to me. We are what we are called ensouled bodies. The body and the soul are together. Yet the soul is superior to the body because the soul will live on forever, where the body one day will die. Yet so much of our lives are consumed on the taking care of our bodies. One of the blessings of the coronavirus was the loss of taste, for which I could focus less on what I was eating and more on the fact that I just needed to eat to live. This was a blessing, a gift from God. May we not have to constantly remember this blessing or receive this blessing. May God grant us the wisdom to remember it. But all of the things that we do for our bodies, all of the mundane things that we have to do to feed ourselves, to make a living, to clean our clothes. All these things, of course, are necessary in the world. And the church would not tell us to ignore any of these things. The church would not have us ignore our health, or our well-being, or our children, or our responsibilities. But rather, first and foremost, we have to put our souls at the very top of the list of our priorities. My brothers and sisters in Christ, I have to say, the idea that the Divine Liturgy is a once a week thing is not good enough. And we are living in a time that demands us to know better. We cannot take Holy Communion once a week and be okay. Of course, we can take Holy Communion when it is offered to us, but our prayer has to be part of our communion with God on a daily and hourly basis. With every breath of our hearts, our prayer has to be strengthened and bring us into communion with God. We have to take our fasting more seriously. Some of us have gotten into the custom of only taking communion once a year or on some of the special feast days. Let me be very clear. My spiritual children, listen to me. This is not acceptable. Communion has to be the center of our lives. We have to prepare ourselves to take communion every single day. That means we have to say our prayers and we have to fast. And we have to prepare ourselves. If we are planning to do something that prevents us from taking communion at the next liturgy, we have to stop. We have to reevaluate our whole week, our whole day, our whole life. And we have to say, how can I do this and take communion. If I can't, I have to stop. If I have plans to go and do things instead of go to a church service, I have to stop. We have to put communion first and the preparation of Holy Communion first in our lives. 
We have to take confession regularly. We have no choice. I am thankful to God that I re received this illness during these past two weeks, which are two of the hardest of my life, because it's opened up my eyes to so many spiritual realities. I don't want to say I ever took the liturgy for granted, but the one week that I could not be here to take the body and blood of Jesus Christ was torture to my soul. And I hope that you can all at home, without receiving the virus, reflect on this and internalize it without having to go through it yourselves. Take the word of your priest that this was, hopefully, I suffered on your behalf this week, these two weeks, so that I can convey to you the message that our spiritual lives need to be stronger than ever during this time. We need to love each other more than ever. We need to pray for one another, lift each other up. We need to come together as a community and receive the body and blood of our common God. Church isn't a social club. We're not here to see what each other are doing. We're here to partake in the same body and blood of God so that together we may be deified. Together we may be saved. This is the whole point of the church. If it's for anything else, we've completely missed the point. So let us during this time reflect and repent and realize that this is our calling from on high. Our calling from on high is to work out our own salvation. As you were all there for me during these weeks, I will be here for you. Please reach out and ask what is needful to be done for the sake of our souls. Let's spend the next good bit of time really reflecting on what it means to be a Christian and how we need to be saved. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.